ever wondered why a metal spoon left in a hot cup of tea becomes warm? This is due to a fascinating concept called heat transfer. Heat transfer, in essence, is the movement of heat from one place to another, and its understanding is fundamental, especially if you're venturing into the realm of engineering. It's the unseen force that shapes so much of our world. From the way our homes are heated to the operation of our engines, it's all about how heat is moved around. Think about that warm spoon again. It didn't heat up by magic. It was because of heat transfer. The heat from the hot tea traveled up the metal spoon, making it warm to your touch. This is just one example of heat transfer in our everyday lives, and there are countless others. Now, here's where things get really interesting. There's not just one, but three main types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Each type has its unique characteristics and applications, and together they explain how heat moves in various contexts. Conduction is what you experienced with the warm spoon. It's the transfer of heat through solids. When you touch a hot object, the heat is conducted through your skin and you feel warmth. Meanwhile, convection is the transfer of heat in fluids, like air or water. It's why a warm breeze feels different than a warm blanket. Then there's radiation. It's a type of heat transfer that doesn't require any medium. It's how the sun's heat reaches us across the vast vacuum of space. Understanding these three types of heat transfer is not just academic, but practical. It can help us design better engines, more efficient heating systems, and even improve our cooking techniques. So let's dive in and unravel the intricacies of heat transfer. Imagine holding an ice cube in your hand. Ever noticed how quickly it melts? That's conduction at work. So what exactly is conduction? Put simply, conduction is the process of heat transfer from one part of a body to another or to another body, where the transfer happens through direct contact. Picture this. You're cooking on a stovetop and you're using a metal spatula. After a while, you feel the handle of the spatula getting hot. This happens because the heat from the stovetop is being transferred to the spatula and then to your hand. This is a prime example of conduction. Now let's delve a little deeper. Conduction is governed by a principle known as Fourier's law. This law states that the rate of heat transfer through a material is proportional to the negative gradient in the temperature and to the area at right angles to that gradient through which the heat is flowing. The measure of a material's ability to conduct heat is called its thermal conductivity. But how does this play out in everyday life? Well, think about why we use metal pots and pans for cooking. Metals, like copper and aluminum, have high thermal conductivity, which means they're good at transferring heat. This is why when you put a metal pan on a hot stovetop, the heat quickly spreads across the entire bottom of the pan, ensuring your food cooks evenly. On the flip side, materials like wood and plastic have low thermal conductivity, which makes them poor conductors of heat. This is why the handle of a pot is often made of plastic or wood, it keeps the heat from traveling up to your hand while you're cooking. Conduction doesn't just impact our daily lives, it also plays a crucial role in many engineering applications. For instance, in HVAC systems, heat exchangers rely on conduction to transfer heat between two fluids. In electronics, heat sinks are used to cool electronic components by dissipating heat into the surrounding air, and they work primarily through conduction. In the automotive industry, the radiator in your car uses conduction to dissipate heat from the coolant that circulates around the engine, preventing it from overheating. In the construction industry, understanding the principles of conduction helps in designing buildings that are energy efficient. For example, using materials with low thermal conductivity for insulation can help keep a building warm in winter and cool in summer. In a nutshell, conduction is a fundamental process that drives heat transfer in a multitude of scenarios. From the simple act of melting an ice cube in your hand to complex engineering systems. It's a concept that is not just fundamental to understanding heat transfer, but also to a wide range of real-world applications. So, conduction is all about heat transfer through direct contact, but what happens when there's no direct contact? Enter convection. Ever wondered why a hot air balloon rises? That's due to convection. Convection, in simple terms, is the transfer of heat through the movement of fluids. This fluid could be a gas or a liquid. 
and it's the key to understanding why that hot air balloon just took off. When you heat fluid, it becomes less dense, causing it to rise. As it rises, it carries the heat with it. So, what's happening in that hot air balloon? The air inside the balloon is heated, it rises, and it pulls the rest of the balloon with it. Now, isn't that fascinating? But convection isn't just about hot air balloons. It's a principle that influences a lot of things around us. Ever noticed how it's cooler by the window on a hot day? That's convection at work. The hot air in the room rises and is replaced by the cooler air from outside. This cycle continues, creating a natural air conditioning effect. Now, let's dive a bit more into the technical side of things. Engineers use convection in a variety of processes, for instance, in cooling systems. The radiator in your car, for example, uses convection to cool down the engine. Hot coolant from the engine passes through the radiator, where it's cooled by air from outside. This cooled coolant then goes back to the engine, and the process repeats, keeping your engine from overheating. Similarly, the heating and cooling systems in buildings also use convection. In winter, a heater warms the air at the bottom, which then rises, spreading warmth throughout the room. Conversely, in summer, cooling systems work by removing the hot air from the room and replacing it with cooler air. Even in the field of meteorology, convection plays a crucial role. It's the driving force behind weather patterns and ocean currents. Warm air rising from the Earth's surface creates low-pressure areas, leading to the formation of clouds and precipitation. Meanwhile, in the oceans, warm surface water is replaced by colder water from the depths, creating ocean currents that help regulate our planet's climate. So you see, convection is a fundamental process that not only affects our daily lives, but also plays a critical role in various engineering and scientific fields. It's about understanding the movement and behavior of fluids under the influence of heat. But remember, heat doesn't just move via conduction and convection. There's a third method that perhaps feels a bit more obscure, a bit more distant. Yes, we're talking about radiation. It's the kind of heat transfer that allows us to feel the warmth of the sun from 93 million miles away. So, convection is about heat transfer through the movement of fluids. But there's yet another way heat can be transferred. Let's talk about radiation. Ever wondered how you can feel the heat from the sun despite it being 93 million miles away? That's radiation for you. Radiation is a remarkable process that allows heat transfer without the need for any medium. It's a phenomenon that plays a vital role in our daily lives, and it's also a crucial concept in the field of engineering. Picture this. You're sitting by a campfire on a chilly evening. Even though you're not directly touching the flames, you can feel the warmth radiating towards you. This warmth you feel is due to radiation, a process that doesn't need air, water, or any other medium to transfer heat. In the simplest terms, radiation is the emission of energy as electromagnetic waves or as moving subatomic particles. It's a fundamental heat transfer process along with conduction and convection, but unlike its counterparts, radiation doesn't require any substance to act as a bridge for the transfer. It can occur in a vacuum like space, where there's no air or matter to facilitate the process. Let's dive a bit deeper. Radiation involves the emission of electromagnetic waves. These waves carry energy away from the emitting object. For instance, the sun emits light and heat in all directions, which travel through the vacuum of space until they reach us here on Earth. Every object that is at a temperature above absolute zero radiates energy. This is because the atoms and molecules of the object are in constant motion, and this motion generates thermal energy that gets emitted as radiation. Radiation is not just about feeling the warmth of a campfire or soaking up the sun's rays. It's a process that's harnessed in various aspects of engineering. For instance, in power plants, nuclear reactors use the process of radiation to generate heat, which is then used to produce electricity. And let's not forget about the role of radiation in our modern day gadgets. Your microwave oven, for example, uses radiation to heat food. The microwaves emitted by the oven excite the water molecules in the food, causing them to vibrate and generate heat. Similarly, in the field of telecommunications, engineers use radiation to transmit signals over long distances. Your cell phone, for instance, receives and sends signals using electromagnetic waves 
which is a form of radiation. In the world of medicine, radiation is used in various diagnostic and therapeutic procedures. For example, x-rays, a type of radiation, allow doctors to look inside the human body without the need for surgical procedures. In conclusion, radiation is a fascinating process that allows for heat transfer without the need for any medium. Whether it's feeling the warmth of the sun from millions of miles away, heating your dinner in a microwave, or receiving a text message on your cell phone, radiation is at work. So, radiation is about heat transfer without any need for a medium. Fascinating, isn't it? So, we've explored the three primary types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. Each of these processes, while distinct, are interconnected and play a pivotal role in the world around us. Let's take a quick journey back. Conduction, our first stop, is the heat transfer through a solid medium. Picture it like a game of telephone, where energy is passed from one particle to another, like whispering secrets through a line of people. It's the reason why a metal spoon gets hot when left in a pot of boiling water. Next up, we have convection. This is the transfer of heat through a fluid, be it liquid or gas. This process is what's behind the warm air that rises in your room when you crank up the heater. The fluid, heated at the bottom, becomes less dense and rises while the cooler, denser fluid sinks, creating a cycle of heat transfer. Finally, we arrive at radiation, the only type of heat transfer that can occur in a vacuum. It's the heat we feel from the sun, millions of miles away, or the warmth radiating from a campfire. This transfer is all thanks to electromagnetic waves that carry energy across space. Understanding these three types of heat transfer is crucial for a myriad of engineering applications. It's the backbone of designing efficient heating and cooling systems, predicting weather patterns and even developing thermal protection systems for spacecraft. Engineers utilize these principles to create and optimize systems that impact our everyday lives. But it's not just engineers who interact with these concepts. Every time you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin or Notice how a hot cup of coffee cools down to room temperature. You're experiencing the effects of heat transfer. Remember, heat transfer is all around us, shaping our world in countless ways. And so that's a wrap on our deep dive into the world of heat transfer. We've journeyed through the fascinating realms of conduction, convection, and radiation, each playing a vital role in the transfer of heat, an everyday phenomenon that shapes our world in ways we often overlook. Remember, conduction is the process of heat transfer between substances in direct contact, such as a metal spoon in a hot soup. On the other hand, convection is a heat transfer involving fluid motion, like how a warm breeze can lift your spirits on a chilly day. And lastly, we delved into radiation, the only type of heat transfer that can occur in a vacuum, just like how our sun's heat reaches Earth. These concepts are not just academic, but they have real-world implications. From the design of energy-efficient buildings and vehicles to the development of thermal management systems in electronics, understanding heat transfer is a critical skill for any budding engineer. It's a cornerstone of mechanical engineering, and its principles are interwoven into many other disciplines of engineering as well. The takeaway here is that heat transfer is everywhere. It's in the toast you had for breakfast, the air conditioning that cools your home, and even in the stars billions of miles away. It's a fundamental aspect of the universe we live in, and by understanding it, we can use it to our advantage, create more efficient systems, and ultimately shape a better future. So let's keep the curiosity aflame and continue to explore the fascinating world of engineering together. Remember, every question you ask, every concept you grapple with, brings you one step closer to becoming the engineer you aspire to be. If you've enjoyed this video about heat transfer, why not give this video a thumbs up? Your likes are the compass that guides us in creating content that you love. And if you're already a part of our VIP loving community, thank you. You are the wind beneath our wings. If you're new here and you found value in this video, consider joining the family. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to ensure you never miss out on a new engineering video.